Okay, I, this time I want to do an example of um, volumes via the cross-section method, um, but I want to give you a, a complete example and try to mimic the way they would ask you on a test. So real quickly, I'm going to take, uh, let's suppose, we've always, you always see lots of examples where you're going around the x-axis. You're rotating the x-axis, the y-axis. You have some sort of curve, and typically they say rotate that curve around the, um, the x-axis, um, where this would be your f of x equals something. Um, in this case, we can say that f of x equals sine um, x. That's a, that's a pretty good representation of that. Um, but when you remember you're taking samples or small delta x's as you move along in x, and they rotate those around the x-axis. Well, in a test, they might say, instead of rotating around the x-axis, that this curve produces some other shape. Because if you rotate around the x-axis, you're, you're going to get a circle around the x-axis, where this is the looking into the x-axis right here. So where this is the area that you're interested in, so you want area as a function of x. So in that case, you are always going to have area <coughs> equal to pi r squared. And your r is going to be equal to this f of x right here. Well, let's say that um, they, they gave us something else where maybe a nice equilateral triangle comes off of a, off away from the y-axis and is dependent, let's say that the height of that triangle is dependent on that curve f of x right there. So the area of a triangle is going to equal one half base times height. So we'll just say your base is here. Let's just say that all these angles are equal. It's going to be an equilateral triangle. They're going to try to give you some clues so you can understand how to calculate that area right there um, as a function of one, one dimension. So in this case, you're going to see this point up here is going to correspond to where you were on the curve. So you pick a point, and let's just say it creates a, a triangle there and that triangle is going to move in that direction. Okay, so um, if this is the case, then one half equals base times the height. So we can have that base right there, or, or we can calculate basically what it is um, as a function of f of x, where your height is going to be equal to f of x. So one half something in here for base, f of x for height, right? and so we just have to figure out what the base is as a function of x, or f of x, rather. And because we, we made it easier on ourselves where we said that this was an equilateral um, triangle, well then we know that this is basically going to be um, 30 degrees here, this is going to be 60 degrees here, um, so, let's see, so, and once again, I didn't do myself any favors because it looks like, um, this side right here equals tangent 30, which is a constant, which is good, and then that's times, uh, h or f of x. And then all that's times 2. So 2 times h times tangent 30 is going to be this whole base here. So base, I'm going to squeeze it in. So it's going to be 2 times f of x times tangent 30 degrees. Okay, 
So typically, if it, went, it would have been easier if this was a three, four, five triangle or something like that, but let's just stick with it. So my area is going to be the one half and the two are going to cancel each other out. So I'm going to have tangent 30, which is actually 0 0.57 um, uh, times f of x squared. Okay, so looking at what we originally drew up here, we're doing it from a range of a to b, we'll say b equals pi, a equals zero. So if you remember your volume equation, and I like to actually start with the limit function. So you just, so it's so much easier to visualize in big chunks of delta x. But I usually start there. So um, that goes to infinity, plus that it helps you remember that function. It's lots of times on the test, if they see that, they're gonna, they're gonna love it. The grader's gonna say, oh, okay, this person knows what they're talking about. So area, axi times delta x. Okay, so that a x i becomes this over here. And we're going to substitute in f of x for sine x. So volume equals limit n i equals 1. We'll start substituting in. We've got our nice tangent 30 degrees, which is constant, so we're not going to have to worry about them too much. f of x squared, so we have sine squared x, and that's a little i here, times delta x. Okay, so that gets translated into our um, integral. So this goes between pi, 0, and this is basically it right here. So we're going to say tangent 30 degrees and sine squared x dx. Okay, what fun. Okay, so let me get another board. And I'll rewrite that again. V equals, and that was integral pi zero, and that was a nice constant tangent 30 and that was sine squared x dx. Okay, so then volume equals, we'll move the tangent 30 out to the front, and then we'll have it times, let's see, um, the integral for, for sine squared is going to be negative one half sine x cosine x plus one half x. I hope that's right. Um, and that's going to be over the range pi zero. Okay, so you can see when we put in a zero, that's going to go to zero. We put in a pi that's going to go to zero. Um, okay, so velocity equals, so this is going to be the main driver here. So it's going to be tangent 30, and then we're going to have in, um, <clears throat> that's going to go to zero plus one half of pi. Put another parentheses here. And then it's going to be minus zero plus zero. Okay, goes away, goes away. So we're just left with volume equals tangent 30 divided by 2 times pi. Okay.
So that seems to be the right answer for this weird example that I put forward. Um, another thing, if perhaps maybe they give you a graph where this comes out as a, oops, a square. And maybe that's going through the center of the square. And maybe in this case, f of x is going to be equal to one of the sides of your square divided by 2. So in that case, your area, if this was a square, would equal, let's see, f of x times 2 squared, and that would be your area. But that was just in case it wasn't a triangle. So anyway, I hope this helps. Uh, I'll be posting more examples as we move on, uh, and then we'll take this and do another example for the, uh, we'll start getting into cylindrical shells which is another fun thing. And then, then we're on to work. So subscribe. You'll see those. Uh, uh, if you subscribe, you'll see them coming up and um, you'll, get, you'll get notices that new videos are there. Anyway, good luck with this. Hope it helps.